Today I will be talking about the preclinical development of adaptive T-cell immunotherapy targeting the minor uh, histocompatibility antigen uh, HA1. Um, many children uh, with uh, high-risk leukemia are cured by hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. However, some will relapse. And for those that relapse, the average of survival is only a few months. So we believe that we can uh, treat those children that relapse using adoptive T cell immunotherapy, uh, genetically modifying T cells to introduce a T cell receptor that target leukemia associated antigen. This leukemia associated antigen can be a cancer specific antigen, an overexpressed self antigen, or a minor histo histocompatibility antigen. Uh, the focus of our work is in the minor antigens. But what are those? So um, normal cells, they will uh, present in their surface uh, peptides that are derived from um, self intracellular proteins in their, cell, their, their cell, cell surface in the context of HLA molecules. Donor T cells will not recognize those peptides due to self and peripheral tolerance. In the context of transplantation, there is uh, genetic polymorphism between donor and recipient. This ge genetic polymorphism will generate uh, unique peptides or uh, uh, peptides that will be uh, presented also by HLA molecules and work as a minor, anti, a minor histocompatibility antigen. Um, if those minor antigens are uh, presented in the cell surface of the recipient cells, the donor T cells are going to recognize those minor anti antigens and activate graft versus host disease and graft versus leukemia. Um, if the minor antigens, uh, some minor antigens are broadly expressed in epithelial cells and hematopoietic cells as well as like leukemia, T cells that recognize those broadly expressed antigens will cause graft versus host disease. However, um, another subset of minor antigens are only expressed in hematopoietic cells or leukemia. So T cells that recognize those uh, minor antigens will have a graft versus leukemia effect if without graft versus host disease. So back to in the context of transplant, a recipient will have uh, normal cells uh, and also uh, leukemia cells. Both of those cells will present in their cell surface minor antigens that before the transplant. After the transplant, the recipient will have what we, ca what we call a uh, hematopoie hematopoietic chimera. Uh, this hematopoietic chimera, it's formed by donor hematopoietic cells and um, recipient or the patient leukemia. So in this uh, case, minor antigens are only expressed by uh, the leukemia cells, so we can uh, have T cells that um, attacked those leukemia cells without uh, damaging the donor uh, cells that are in this uh, recipient. So one of those hematopoietic uh, restrict uh, minor antigens is the HA1 antigen. HA1 it's derived from a protein called HMHA1. This uh, Antigen, it's uh, present by the common allele A2. So here we see the, uh, that a non-immunogenic peptide that have, that have a arginine as the third amino acid, because of genetic uh, polymorphism, will have a histidine as the third amino acid. There is uh, strong evidence that support that HA1 is important for graft versus leukemia effect. Uh, some of that support come from a paper published in 2003. What there was uh, evidence is that T cells that are specific for HA1, um, they, will pro uh, they will expand or proliferate and that expansion um, coincide with remission after transplant. 
So we start by investigating uh, this, the proteins. So uh, we start doing a qPCR to looking, looking for the mRNA for the H, uh, MHA1 protein. So as we can see, we didn't see um, the presence of mRNA for this protein in any of the epithelial cells that we investigated. However, the mRNA is pres present in the, in the hematopoietic cells that we did investigate, including leukemia. So taking that in consideration, we decide to generate a T-cell immunotherapy targeting the HA1 uh, antigen. So to do that, we are generating T-cell clones that recognize the HA1, isolate the TCR, clone into a lentivirus vector, then evaluate the TCR, optimizing um, our construct, and then translate them to the GMP lab and to the clinic. So for the cloning of the cells, so we pulse dendritic cells with the antigenic variant, uh, variant of the um, of the peptide, and then after um, 12 days, we did a split well microtoxicity assay, uh, pulsing T2 uh, looking for the killing of T2 cells that were pulsed with the antigen or uh, not. So we were able to identify seven clones that uh, specifically kill T2 cells. So then we use a HA1 dextromer. So we were able to see that this dextromer recognized all the seven clones. And then we did a peptide titration to see how, that, how the clones would function. And we see a um, very good killing of cells by all seven clones, even when we were using, uh, pulsing these tissue cells with very small amount of peptides. So we got, uh, um, have max slices of about uh, 50 picomoles. So next, uh, we isolate uh, the T cell receptor sequence and um, clone into a lentivirus vector. So this lentivirus vector were codon optimized to maximize expression and also was cysteine modified to minimize um, mispairing and maximize pairing. So to evaluate our TCR, we select CD8 positive cells and then stimulate them with anti-CD3 and CD8, uh, CD28 beads. After two days, um, the cells were transduced with the lentivirus vector. After five days, um, we sorted CD8 positive cells, HA1 dextromer positive cells, and then uh, we wrap them, uh, so we wrap expand then using a wrap protocol. And then uh, after 10 days, we use those cells in functional assays. So after the expansion, we chose to keep working with two clones that were our two best clones. So as you can see, we were still able to uh, detect those uh, TCR using the HA1 dextromer. And then we look for uh, the killing of T2 pool cells. So in this uh, graphic, we have the uh, parental clones as the solid bar, and the uh, striped uh, bars are the ones that are the cells that were transduced with the TCR. So as we can see, we were able to, um, so they both, the parental clones and the cells transduced with TCR were both able to kill um, our cells pulsed with T2, um, in a similar level, and they did not recognize um, an un uh, unrelated peptide. Also, we did the peptide titration, and we did see a very similar behavior in the um, comparing the clones with the parental, uh, the TCR, the cells that were transduced with the TCR with the parental clones. So then next, and probably more important, uh, so can our TCR transduced cells kill uh, primary leukemia? So this graphic, uh, we are uh, looking, for, looking for leukemia, primary leukemia, that are HA1 positive and one that is HA1 negative. So as you can see, both our parental clone and the cells that were transduced with the TCR had um, significant killing of the HA1 um, positive leukemia, and they did not significant kill 
leukemias that were HA1 negative. We also did a titration of our, TC, of our um, effector cells, so an ET titration. So we're starting with 40 effector cells to one target, going down to about one to one. And even in a one to one ratio, we will still see significant uh, killing of um, our primary leukemia. Also, we did a cytokine release assay and proliferation, and we saw a specific cytokine release and proliferation uh, for the uh, or TCR, constru TCR constructs. I just don't have the time to show that data. So currently, we are optimizing our construct and uh, several aspects of the preclinical trial. For example, we are working on the um, proliferation of our transduced cells. So Briefly, I mentioned that we are using the a rapid expansion protocol that um, we are using OKT3, IL2, and PBMCs. Uh, it's starting with 150,000 cells, and we proliferate those cells for 10 days. We are using, uh, originally using T75 flask. So after that 10 days of proliferation, we are able to recover um, 200 million cells, and that is a, exp uh, it's a, more than 1,000 fold expansion. So this extraordinary fold expansion would already let us have a, um, enough cells in for um, the clinical trial. So we could translate that well. But we decided to also test uh, to grow those cells in, in G-Rex um, flask. So the G-Rex has um, a silicon base that allowed better gas extension so with the GREX, we were able to recover about 300 million cells, also starting with 150,000, and that is about 2,000-fold expansion. And also, we did use half amount of the media in that context. Um, also, we were um, looking to include a suicide gene in our construct, just in case of unspecific, uh, the unexpected, unspecific toxicity of those uh, TCR. Um, so we are working with the uh, truncated EGFR, ICASP-9, RQR-8, or the MIC eptop so, um, we so back to the killing assay, so we saw that um, all the constructs had a sig uh, similar killing compared with the uh, TCR that uh, doesn't have a suicide gene. Also, to see if our constructs are susceptible to the suicide drug, we incubate uh, those cells with or without the suicide drug uh, for 24 hours, and then we reassess the viability of those cells uh, by flow. So as we can see in this graphic, we were able to see um, at least some um, susceptibility of the um, cells by the suicide drug. Also, we're optimizing which T cell subset we're going to be using for our clinical trial. Uh, so we could use CD8 positive cells and or CD4 uh, T cells or use naive T cell depletion. So Dr. Blickley will be talking about that right after me. So she will explain to you the advances of use of that, uh, this technology. Also, we were optimizing our TCR in, the CD, in CD4 positive cells. So uh, we were including a CD8 co-receptor in our construct. This work is being done in our lab by Dr. Medina. Uh, she has a poster here, poster num number 12. I encourage you to stop by and see the amazing work that uh, Dr. Medina is doing. So after that, uh, our plan is to translate our work to the GMP lab and to the clinic, and then to, uh, uh, to assess the feasibility and safety of our T cell immunotherapy after transplant relapse. With that, uh, I want to thank you, my mentor, Marie Blickley, and also Indira, Tanya, Nicholas, Melinda, Hagov, and Barbara. Uh, all this data, it's a teamwork. I'm just the one presenting what we have. And I want to thank you also uh, my funding support, and thank you. <laughs>